Hey guys, it's May May, and look at this adorable little stove. This is made from cardstock, not very many pieces, and very easy to do. And I showed this in my video last Thursday and asked you guys if you'd rather see this first over the tags. And the poll and the voting that you did says do this one first. So we're going to do this one today. And I'm going to move the tags to Saturday's video. So you don't have to wait till next Tuesday. You'll get those on Saturday. But I also knew that you would want this big guy. And anytime I do one of these projects, you always ask for a mini. So here's the mini version. And I did this one in fall colors because I thought he was cute for little fall treats. And the best part is I have created a Cricut cut file for you guys. Now, in the 12 by 12 size on the cut file, I did not include the one box with the 12 by 12 piece of paper because the 12 by 12 would be too big for the mat to cut all the lines I needed. Plus, this is very simple folding. You really don't need the Cricut for that. But everything else on here, the door, the top, the little eyes, everything else is included in the Cricut cut file. For the six by six, everything's included, the box and everything. But if you don't have a Cricut, do not worry because I have all the measurements on my blog post for both of these. So I'm going to assemble this one with you today. And then the little one is assembled the same way, just with smaller paper. And I have all those measurements for you. So let's get started making this cute little thing. I'm going to show you how to make this. It is super easy. Now I looked online, I watched some other tutorials and they were a little too detailed for me. You know, I do simple. So I'm going to show you the simplest way I discovered to do it. Here's what you're going to need to start. Matter of fact, I'm going to use a different color for this one. I wanted to make a pink stove and see what it looked like. Not my color. I know, stepping outside my box. But here's what you'll need. You'll need three pieces of cardstock, okay? This first piece, also, don't worry, all the measurements, all the supplies, everything's going to be listed on my in my blog post, which is linked in the description below. So this piece is five by three and a half. This is six by six, and this is 12 by 12. It's that easy. The only one you really have to think outside the box on is this guy. So let's first make the stove body itself. That kind of gets you going. So I'm going to use my big scoreboard on this guy. And we're going to score it. It's so easy. We're making a 4x4 four four box that has no lid with this piece. Okay? So you're going to score at 4, at 8. You're going to flip it and score at 4. And at eight, it is that easy. That's how we're gonna start, okay? That's how my brain likes, super easy. So we'll move that aside for now because we'll need it again in a few minutes. So just sit that over there. Now, I'm gonna use my marker to show you this. So don't stress, this is gonna be on mine, not yours, okay? I'm going to cut this line, okay? Then I'm gonna skip a line, cut this line. This seems harder than it really is. I promise it's not. Skip a line cut this line. We've done this before. We made a basket like this. Skip a line and cut this line. The reason I'm skipping a line and doing this is because I want my box to be sturdy. So I'm going to have a panel to glue to a panel all the way around. Let me show you what I mean. Now I'm going to cut that line real quick just to where they cross. You won't need to mark yours. If you do need to, go ahead. It won't matter. I'm just going to do that. And then cut this score line, just like so, and then this one. And like I said, I'm doing this because I want to use these squares for stability, all right? So now I'm going to go ahead and do all of my creasing. I like to cut before I crease. I feel like I don't fight the paper as hard that way. So just run around and crease everything down, just like that. Okay, now what's going to happen is we're going to take one side and we're going to glue it in. And then we're going to take the other side and glue it, the other side and glue it, and the other side and glue it. And that way, all four sides will be double walled. Does that make sense? I think it does. I just think it makes for a sturdier um, stove if you do that. The other thing, I like to make sure my glue goes really close to the edge so I don't have any loose edges. You know what I'm saying? So even if I have to wipe some glue away on the ends, I would rather it be close together uh, or close to the edges so that everything is nice and sturdy. So I'm just going to line this one up, lay that down and squish it, just like so. so there's one side. Now here, I'm going to put the glue on the inside. You can do the flap. It doesn't matter as long as you're gluing the right section together. This pink is cute. I never use pink. I'm really stepping outside the box. Okay, so I'm going to glue this dude together. 
press that into place. Luckily, it looks like all my little black lines are going to the inside, so I didn't mess up too bad. Some of them may stick out, no big deal. Okay, I think I'll tuck this one up and glue this one to it to hide the black line. Again, doesn't matter as long as you're gluing each side together. You won't have that line to hide because you won't have to make that mark. But I just found that doing this, and I've done this before, it just makes the um, project more sturdy to have the glue, you know, holding the sides together. So if you put kind of a heavy, um, you know, if you put cookies or if you put a cupcake and it might be heavy, this box will be able to hold it no problem. All right, and then here we're going to glue this together. All right, press it down. And that is your stove. Now I wanna tell you, or that's the box, this is a four by four box. So it is nice and roomy. You'll have lots of room and it is very sturdy because we've double walled every section. All right, so there's that. Let's work on the door. So you've got your six by six piece, okay? I'll pull out my smaller scoreboard just for um, room sake. This is so easy. On the six by six, you're gonna score it at one inch and at five inches. You're going to turn it and you're going to score it at one inch and at five inches. Basically, we're just scoring an inch in all the way around. So that's your scoring. How easy is that, right? Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to lay them at an angle crossing that center mark where my score marks meet in the middle. See where they meet right here at this X right there? I'm going to cross that and cut away the tab and leave myself this angled section. So I'm just crossing it over, just like this, crossing it over, and crossing it over. Super easy, that's what we're doing. These, I know this looks weird, but let me show you. If you look at my door, you see I had these pieces that lock inside. That's what we just created. So let's tuck that back in. All right, now we need to do a little bit of work to this guy, and I'm gonna show you what I did. So I wanted to find the center of my um, stove. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to run a pencil mark from one uh, mark of the square to the other. What I mean is my scored square in the middle. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to make a pencil mark down this side and this side. This is really being picky, but I just wanted to make sure that my stove door was centered. So now I've made myself a little mark, paying attention to the square on the inside. Don't worry about your flaps, just the square. These won't be exact because we couldn't hold our scissors perfect. Just worry about the square, okay? So I made myself a template. This is a two by two square of cardstock. I took my corner rounder on the half inch corner and rounded the corners because this is gonna make the, op the window of my stove. Then I scored this with an X in the middle crossing, just like I did here, so that I can use that to help me line this up and get this in just the right spot on the stove. Super easy, and I'm gonna save this template for future projects because I think if I wanna make a lot of these stoves, this will be cool. Now I'm gonna take my pencil and trace this. And I'm tracing it all the way around because I wanna be able to see all of the edge when I go to trim it out. So that's gonna be my stove window, okay? It's pretty centered. It might be a little off because you know we're not perfect, but it's gonna do just fine. And this is the hard part. You remember this from grade school? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna poke a hole in the middle with my snips or whatever's handy. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut to my line that is my window, okay? Just gonna stick my scissors in here and run them around the edge. Now I took my time on this because I wanted this to be kind of smooth, but I wanna tell you, if you're comfortable with like an X-Acto or a pin blade or a sharp knife, go ahead and use that if you want to. But I was afraid I'd get kind of messy on this and I thought if I just take my time on my scissors, it'll look better. And I probably would use my cutter bees with this just because the blade might be a little smoother, but these were handy. There we go, easy peasy. Now we can take these guys and turn them up just like so. And these will be what holds the stove into place. Now I'm going to show you how I got this little flap. I don't have a punch or anything that will do that for me. So I'm going to show you what I did. 
So I took a piece of scrap paper and a one inch circle punch and I put the scrap paper into the punch halfway and made myself a template. This one right here, just a half inch circle template. Again, I'm gonna save it with my other little piece and I'm gonna decide which piece is gonna be the top piece. We'll see which one looks the, the straightest. I think it's this one. So here on this little flap, I'm gonna take this little piece and laying it at my score line, and you can cross the score line with this, that'll be fine. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball center that and trace it. I didn't think at first I would need this. On the original post, they had one, and I thought, oh, you don't really need that, so I didn't put it on the first time. But after I made it, I realized that it does help you open and close the box. This time I'm gonna use my blade, and I'm just gonna take my time here and just slice this. So now you can see I've just sliced that through using my blade and that will actually poke through to the front of the stove like this, okay? So now we can attach this to our box and the way we're gonna do it is with one of these flaps. And obviously, since this is the top of your stove, you wanna glue the opposite flap in. So what I'm doing is gluing this down. Just like that. I'm gonna center this in the stove, okay? just that little flap and lay it down into place so that it can be my stove door flap. So you can see, I just lined it up with the edge and glued it in. So now we have our little stove door, which I can tuck in here just like so and show you. Now I'm gonna put some acetate here for the window, but you really don't have to. It'd be just as cute if you don't put some in, but that's how the stove goes together. So with your piece that is five by three and a half, you're gonna put this into your scoreboard and we're gonna score it at half an inch. This is with it on the five inch side and at four and a half. Then I'm gonna turn it on the three and a half inch side. I'm gonna score it at half an inch, one and a half inches, two inches, and three. So we're just scoring it just like that. Now then, before I do my folds, because I told you I like to do this before I do my folds, I'm gonna do some snips. Every one of the little lines on the end of the page gets snipped on both ends. So I'm cutting from the edge to where they cross just these little snips on the end. Then I'm going to fold. We are literally just making a little thin box. I'm gonna go ahead and take all these guys and fold them up so that the assembly is easier, just to get those started. So to start our assembly, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this edge to this edge. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna bend this down Add some glue inside the score line, not on the tabs, just on the inside of the score line, just like so, and then close this down on top of that flap. And then I can open that up. So see, we've made like a tube, okay? Here, I'm gonna tuck the two small pieces in, all right? one piece down and one piece over. But what I want you to watch is this. This is my raw edge back here. So I'm gonna make sure I turn all of the raw edges to the back. I just think it's cleaner and neater that way. So pay attention to where those edges are. You'll know what I'm talking about when you make this at home. You'll see that all of the kind of raw or um, not folded edge, the open edge will all be in the same place. So there's that one. Now I'm gonna tuck these in. Fold this down and make sure I fold that back to where it goes, the raw side back here, and then I'm gonna put some glue on this end. So easy to do, right? It really is. You can make these super fast. Now then, I'm gonna bring this to the stove and with the raw edges in the back, I'm gonna glue it to the top. Super duper simple. These are so cute. I'm so glad this was brought to my attention. I've never even tried to make one of these before, but I think it's adorable. And it's really more sturdy than you think. When you do the box the way we did, and every time we add a piece of paper or another layer, it just gets sturdier and sturdier. I just glued that to the very back, nice and flush. See that? 
And I've liked all the raw edges going to the back. So now when you look at it from the front, it's kind of smooth and neat and clean. Now then it's time to decorate, which is the fun part. Let's go ahead and put our acetate on the inside. So this is my acetate and it's actually um, overhead projector film. That's what I use. I had a box given to me by my aunt and I use it like crazy. I am going to cut this slightly under four by four square. I'm just bringing it just below four inches. I'm not really, it's not really a measurement. I'm just making it just slightly under four by four. That way this will sit inside the score marks of the stove front that we made. Let me show you what I mean by that. So see how we've got the score marks. This is gonna sit just inside that and give us plenty of room for opening and closing. If you make it four by four, it might keep you from shutting it all the way down. So just trim it a little shy. This, I'm going to clean off my pencil marks because I don't like them. And you can do this before you glue it in, but this is how I did it last time and it was just fine. Now for my acetate, I decided to use sticky tape. I find that it works really well and I think it sticks better than if I tried to use the liquid adhesive and also it's not as ugly to look at. I know that sounds crazy, but the glue, the wet adhesive kind of gets kind of squishy and bubbly and you're gonna see through this and I don't really wanna see that. So I'm gonna use my sticky tape and I'm just running it around the edge here, just like so. You can also put this on before you assemble. Do anything that makes it easier for you. And then one more piece here. So make sure you clean your acetate before you put it in because once it's in there, it's really hard to clean. And by cutting this just slightly smaller, it gives you plenty of room for that uh, door to fold well. Now, in hindsight, this is the second one that I've made. I might even build all of this before I attach it to the box just to give yourself some hand room, but that's up to you. If it's easier for you to go ahead and build this section first, but I wanted you to kind of see it come together so that every piece makes sense where it goes, because I find that makes life easier when you're assembling. Okay, so now we have our little door get this folded in correctly. Look at that, how cute it is with the little plastic in it. Isn't that adorable? Okay, now we need to do the top of the stove and the way we do that is with just with some squares. So I'm using a piece of scrap black cardstock. This piece needs to be three and a quarter and it is by three and three quarters. Oh, it actually worked out perfect. I thought I was gonna have to trim it here, but I didn't. So that's a piece there that I had in my stash. And then what I did, cause I thought I wanted the front to look a little different. I took my corner rounder and on the quarter inch rounder, which is the smaller side, I rounded two sides, just the front of that. Cause I thought it'd be cute sitting, um, not flush with the back, but lined up with the back like this and have a little corner round at the top. So that gets glued right there. Now I'm not gonna glue it down yet. I'm gonna go ahead and build it before I do. I think that'll be easier. And you might even wanna do it with the top part here, but this is pretty easy to get to. So let's go ahead and build the eyes of the stove. And here's how you'll do it. You're gonna take that one inch circle punch and a one and a quarter inch circle punch. This is an old, old one I have in my stash that's a little hard to punch nowadays, but we're gonna use it anyway. So, so I've got some silver. This is a metallic or kind of an opalescent silver and just some white cardstock. So the first thing I'm gonna cut is four one and a quarter inch circles. So there's those guys. You hear how old and creaky it is, but it still works, so we're good. Then I'm gonna cut four one inch silver circles. Let me flip this over so I can make sure I don't waste any because I need some more of this silver for another part. Okay, and while I've got it, I'm gonna go ahead and um, punch the little stove dials, the little knobs for the stove out of the same silver. I'm gonna punch four of these as well. Okay, so there's my circle. So I need four half inch, that's what these are, okay? Four one inch and four one and a quarter. All those measurements will be on the blog. Now, while I've got this little scrap, I'm gonna cut myself that is a quarter of an inch by one inch. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this down to one inch, this little strip, just like that. And then I'm gonna cut a quarter of an inch off. 
That is the easiest way for me to do that. This becomes the little piece at the top of the stove that looks like the little digital readout. So that's what I'm gonna use there. All right, these guys I'm gonna sit to the side for a minute while we work on the top of the stove. I am going to foam dot the silver pieces on top of the white. So each one of these, I'm just gonna stick a couple of foam dots on and then we'll adhere those to the white circles. So I peeled the little backers off all of the foam and these will just center on top, right? And I'm just eyeballing this. This was the hardest part was getting these centered because um, I'm not directly over them. I'm doing it so you guys can see it. So some of these won't be centered and I'm not gonna stress about it. It'll be cute enough. I bet some of the eyes on my stove aren't perfectly centered either. All right. You guys have that? You have the stove eyes that are tw that are tilted? I have them. <laughs> okay. Now, these guys are going to live on the top of our stove. So, I'm going to lay these out like this. If you need to line these up perfectly, measure, make your marks. Look, I got that one crooked. I'm not worried about it. Measure, make your marks, do what you need to do. I'm going to just kind of eyeball them and glue them straight down to this little piece. I do find doing it flat on the surface before I go to the stove top is easier because I don't have to press onto the stove. It kind of looks like a Lego or a robot to me at the same time. Okay, now this guy is ready to glue onto the top of our stove. Now I'm gonna do this section. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little piece we made for the digital readout and I'm gonna glue it centered kind of toward the top of this little back piece. Again, I'm just eyeballing. It's just for cute. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get that glued down like so. Then these little guys are gonna go on either side. So I'm gonna put a dot of glue. Pick these guys up. One here. One here. And the same on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got these little pearls. They're just little sticky back pearls and they come on one strand so I have to snip them apart like that. I'm gonna take one of these guys and I'm gonna put it into the center of each of my stove dials at the top. I just think they're cute. They look like fancier knobs. They just give it a little something. So there's our little dials at the top with the pearls, all looking adorable. Now let me show you what I did to add a little tag to it, or not exactly a tag, sort of like that. I took a little piece of white cardstock and a stamp from my stamp set called Made With Love. I mixed some of these up. There's a whole bunch of things like handcrafted, special made, kitchen, uniquely homemade, one of a kind, and down here it's like for you from my, so many things you can use this one for. I took the words that say from my kitchen with love and I'm gonna stamp that here. So just gonna ink this up really well. And I'm just gonna stick it onto our little piece here and stamp that down. Cute. Close that up. Then I'm gonna ribbon tail or fishtail one end. Sniff that. Then I decided to use some foam squares and pop this up because I thought it was cute to have a little dimension. So I'm just gonna stick some foam squares here and there. I also think since some of my little tag is gonna show through the acetate stove window on the other side, it was cleaner to stick it on this way than to use liquid glue. Cause like I said, the liquid glue kind of squishes and I didn't love that. So to the edge of the door, stick that down. I'm gonna open the door and press it to make sure it's all stuck on good. And that, oh, I forgot one thing. It was almost our door. We need our bar right there. Let me show you how I did that. So using that same little scrap that I had before, I'm gonna cut a piece that is three and three quarters, and this is the silver, I thought it was cute for the handle, by three eighths. Now I'm gonna use something that you may not have in your stash, but if you'll look, you probably have something in your stash that will work for this, because I wanted to round the edges of this little guy, but if you don't care about rounding the edges, then just put it on there like this, it'll be fine. So this is the word window punch from Stampin' Up, looks like this. I've had this for a long time in my stash. I cut this piece just wide enough to slide into the edge of this and be able to punch it to give myself that round corner. Again, I'm really splitting hairs here. This is like not necessary, but I just think that this will be cute when it's on the stove and it did turn out cute on my other stove. 
So there we go. Rounded the little edges there. You could probably do that with your scissors and not be so fussy. Then I'm going to stick some foam squares onto this piece. I put three on here, one on either side and one in the middle. And then this little guy is ready to go on our stove. So just line it up. I'm just eyeballing it. Something like that. And that's your stove all made and ready to go. Now I did make this little um, oven mitt, but I just drew that like I freehanded it and then cut it out in the shape of an oven mitt and tied it on with a little baker's twine. You can do all kinds of stuff to decorate. I think these are super cute. I like the pink. I think it turned out just as cute as the red. And imagine mixing all your punches, maybe, and I think this would be cute if you used a little scallop punch up here to make it a little more feminine. Maybe if you cut out a piece to go around your stove door to make that a little softer. Who knows? Fill this with some goodies and give it to somebody for the holidays and they will love you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. And if you make these, we want to see them. Head over to our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I, and share with us your recreation. Don't forget all the dimensions, all the uh, supplies, everything you need are going to be on the blog post that is linked in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I will talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.